Last time, you guys had managed to find the actual entrance to the creatures who have been stealing the farm animals. At least you presume that to be so. It was covered in a bunch of black spider-like webbing, but it didn't catch flame when you tried lighting it on fire. Although it did seem to have an effect whenever you tried using anything with like radiant damage. Not that it like completely evaporated it, but it did actually have an effect on it. You guys managed to fill up your spool with a bunch of spider silk. You guys did go down this hole and you guys began exploring mainly Haldak and Walker. You guys went to two sides of the tunnel down here to investigate what looked like wrapped up carcasses, uh, relatively small, but wrapped up in the spider silk, which turned out to be the uh, missing chickens that had been like taken the night before. They attacked you and you noticed that they have turned into these spider-like monstrosities that are just kind of mixed with the chicken. You don't really have a name for them, but essentially the chickens have eight eyes, including like their two normal eyes, uh, and along with six extra spider legs branching out from their backs. And the creatures also look to be like completely dehydrated and completely emaciated. You guys actually had a kind of a tough time with the chickens to the point that Walker had to retreat and not return for the rest of the session. <laughs> I was fine. Haldak was fine. But Walker, last we saw of him, he was climbing back up the rope you guys had left to kind of lick his wounds outside. And uh, Walker, as you had done that, story-wise, the sun is going down. And uh, you can tell that there's like a full moon rising. You know it's going to be dark soon. Bad moon on the rise, gentlemen. But uh, Walker, as you're licking your wounds, Janna, Lexogleb, and Haldak, you guys continued down the hallways. You had two options, left or right. You went left and you saw some large creature lurking in the shadows further up ahead. Uh, you didn't get a good look at it, but you saw it scurrying ahead. And I believe Haldak managed to get a shot off with his uh, hand axe. And you guys rushed after it, trying to catch up to it. Haldak, you managed to like walk across no problem, but Jana and Blectoglip, you fall through a trap in the floor, causing some damage, but also finding one of the missing order members who had come out here to scout the mission. And on him, you did find some health potions. You guys continued down the tunnel where you were ambushed by instead of cow spider creatures, because there's nothing but variety in this playthrough. <laughs> and essentially the same thing. You have these cows who look like they've been drained of all their fluids, just completely emaciated with four spider legs protruding from their backs so that their hooves are just kind of dangling down every now and then just touching the ground just to kind of keep the momentum going. But also with eight eyes, two of which are their normal eyes, six spider eyes, and it just looks like nasty black skin. Like, it looks horrific. But you guys were ambushed by two of those creatures, uh, but you did manage to take them out. And that is when Blexogleb found a secret hole that seems to go further into these tunnels. And that's where we'll leave off as Walker rejoins the party. Ah, uh, so you finally decided to join us? I had to go out for a smoke. Thought you guys could handle it by yourselves. Well, uh, you weren't wrong. <laughs> you all seem fine. Well, you're just in time. You know, we crawled in this deep, dark hole. Now we're going to crawl into that deep, dark hole and see where that leads. Uh, my guess is spiders. Yeah, spiders and more deep, dark holes. Yeah, walk. you would see the remains of what were these cow-spider hybrids uh, slowly deteriorating into black ichor. All right. Just like the chickens. Mm -hmm. Chicken ichor. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you call me? <laughs> Shall we proceed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll lead. I like that plan. Glexogleb extends his arm, but like very long, as if to like say, "Well then." <laughs> he like kind of like does like the proceed, but his arm just like keeps going. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm going, I'm going. All right. So you guys do make your way through. I'm assuming it's gonna be Haldak in front, always followed by Glexogleb. Then it's gonna be John or Walker. I'll take up the rear. I'm okay with that. So you guys are making your way through the shadowy tunnel. Merging from the depths, you find yourselves in a vast underground cavern, bathed in an ethereal dim blue light. And you guys probably do turn off whatever light you guys have as you're going down this tunnel, I would imagine, because you do at some point see a blue dim light at the end of it. Um, unless you guys want to keep your lights on. My dark vision's still probably good to go. Doesn't someone have a glowing tongue? Yeah, that's mine's magical in nature and, you know, glamorous. 
Yeah. <laughs> the envy of many. Also, it glows. Oh, it glows. All right. All right. Um, are you guys trying to be stealthy or? Aldak is never intentionally stealthy. He has to be reminded. I'll try to be stealthy. So, like, if they get caught out, I'll, I'll, I, I won't be completely caught with my pants down either. You guys continue towards this dim blue light, and you do come into this open cavern. The cavern walls are composed of large, eerie, bluish-green stones that are casting this surreal, otherworldly glow across the entire space. You see to one side of this cavern, an opposing altar takes center stage, while beside it stands a statue that exudes an aura of ominous dread. The statue's features are grotesque, resembling a monstrous arachnid deity, its limbs outstretched in a semblance of dominance. You guys would also notice two humanoid shapes woven in black spider silk lay motionless besides the Yiri statue. Their forms twisted and bound, trapped in the grip of an unsettling fate. Uh, on the opposite side, to your guys' direct right, uh, you guys do see three more of these demonic spider cow creatures. Uh, they seem to be tending to a sizable clutch of giant dark blue spider eggs. They don't seem to have noticed you yet. Sneak attack! Possibly. What would you guys like to do? Interesting. That's quite a pav there. A pav here. Hmm. Wait a minute, these cows built an altar? Were they hewn it out of the stone? I don't think it was the cows. I have so many questions. Black said Glab will say, do we go in guns blazing? That's all I can do. Jarna says, uh, one moment. I just want to check something. I'm going to cast Sea Invisibility. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that there's nothing, uh, nothing invisible, nothing that we wouldn't be able to. Nobody hiding in here. Yeah, looking around, you're not seeing anything that's invisible. I imagine you would probably like see it kind of like shimmering, um, but it seems like everything in here is visible. It definitely helps having the light blue shining. You're able to see, particularly with your dark vision, quite well. I say, I don't seem to see anything hidden. Uh, it does appear that it's just us and those odd cow beings. Do we want to slay them? I'm make the worst burgers ever, I guess. I cast bonfire. <laughs> Here. Do you cast it? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna create a bonfire right there. I want to make some burgers. 100% Angus beef. I, I don't know if you'd want to make burgers out of these. You saw what they were turning into. <laughs> yeah. Chicken acre. <laughs> Come on down to Blexiglev Farms with the finest chicken liquor. Icker. No, not chicken liquor. <laughs> <laughs> chicken acre, chicken licking. <laughs> chicken acre, acre. It's finger looking good. Thing you're looking good. Yeah, I was just I was just gonna ask how you guys like your ranks. Great. And I was just gonna barge in. Right of fertilized. <laughs> as Haldak like barges in, that's when I'm gonna cast bonfire. Black Subglab will slam his whole body into the ground into a puddle so fast that like you can feel heat coming off his body. He slams into a puddle and then where the cow is standing, flames emerge onto the ground and create a little bonfire. Right here. Okay, guys, roll initiative. Uh, would it be safe to say that I am raging? Ah, uh, you can rage. I am raging. I think that's your last one, correct? Um, uh, let me check. Yeah, no, that's my last one. So you guys are each going to get one surprise round. So, Blexiglev, you're casting Bonfire on this cow here? Yep. So it's a five-foot cube, so it, it's going to be specifically, I guess, in this cube right here in this corner. All right, got to make a deck save to start? Yep, deck save. Ooh, sorry. It's going to be a D8 of damage. No, I roll it. Ugh. That is going to be one <laughs> damage. Taking one fire damage. <laughs> Slow cook. This cow is currently just on like one of its spider legs, which is just in that one space. As soon as it feels the fire, it just kind of moves the spider leg. Sorry, it's 2D8 because I'm at fifth level. Can I roll one more D8? I'll allow it. Yay. Three damage. <laughs> okay, he takes two damage. Okay, fine. <laughs> and is this cow wearing anything um, flammable? Or ignitable? Oh, yeah, he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Well, it's currently ablaze. <laughs> oh, that was his favorite shirt. <laughs> no, this camera is rather upset. You will get a bill from his team. <laughs> <laughs> he just whips out his accordion and smacks you with it. Because <laughs> he's tacky. <laughs> that is all. Um, are you staying, trying to stay in the cave, Plexiglub, or are you coming out? I'm going to stay in the cave. All right, Walker. I'm going to pop out and using up my crossbow expert, or whatever the hell it is, 
I, I take a minus five to hit to do 10 extra damage. I'm going to shoot each one of them. I'm sorry, you're shooting all three of them? Yep. They're a little bigger than the chickens. You should have better luck this time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, so starting from uh, the top and then sequentially going down the line. So let's see. The 11s are going to be 14s. Do any of those hit? The 14s just hit. Sweet. Uh, Weird Al Kalkovich is still fine. <laughs> Weird, Al, Weird Al Kalkovich. <laughs> <laughs> First cow, that's 19 damage. Then third cow, that's going to be 17 damage. All right. And uh, what kind of damage is that? Is that just piercing? Yeah, pier piercing damage. All right. It doesn't seem to all go through, but it, they uh, are damaged. Far more than uh, Kalkovich. Yeah. <laughs> um, and are you trying to stay inside that hole, or are you coming out? I'm coming out a little bit. All right. Yep, that's easy enough. All right. Jana, what would you like to do with your surprise round? going to go ahead and walk out of the hole. You kind of step ahead of Flexo Gleb? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to actually walk into the cavern to about here, uh, which is neat. Uh, and then in a diagonal, I'm going to cast uh, Thunder Wave. Okay, you can probably hit both of those two. So that's how I'm going to do. All right, and that's a con save? Yeah, con 14. I'm going to actually cast it at second level. Okay. That's going to be thunder damage. Um, we're going to start with Kalkovich and then the other guy. Ooh, piece of shit. Piece of shit. Okay. Uh, so that's going to well, be half damage and they're not going to move. Correct. And for second level, that is 3d8. Pretty good. Can oh, oh, that hurt. That does hurt. These these cows are looking pretty rough. You might have brought the thunder. Mm -hmm. No, maybe it will be a maybe it will be an early night. <laughs> Is it just an action you get on a surprise round, or kind of I can bonus action shit too, right? For this, it's really just the one. Although I did allow Haldak to do his rage. No, that's fine. But yeah, these cows are looking a little bloodied now. This one's looking all right. That being said, uh, Haldak. All right, already raging. I'm running up with my uh, crotch of glowing. As you do. I'm leading you guys like a more uh, rowdy Rudolph. <laughs> and I'm going to make uh, two attacks on this guy. Well, I'm going to go for three. And I'm going to make him reckless. All right, first one, that's going to be a 21. A 21 will hit. Uh, next one's going to be a 22. 22 will hit. And then my hand axe is going to be also a 22. Yeah, those are all going to hit. First attack. And right, this one gets necrotic damage. So this is going to be... 10 piercing damage from my mace, as well as 6 necrotic damage. Okay, so how much damage is that non-necrotic? That's 10. Okay, that doesn't all seem to go through. And how much necrotic? 6. Oh, uh, yeah, no, the necrotic doesn't seem to do anything. Oh. Oh, with extra rage, my second attack will do uh, 6 blood, uh, piercing damage. Uh, this cow is hurt, but still up. All right, my hand axe comes down on him, and that's going to be 5 points of slashing damage. And that is just enough. You guys may take out one of the cows. Haldak and his rage is going to look at the other one like, Where's the beef? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, how much movement did I spend going to this cow? 20. All right, so yeah, where's the beef? And he's going to move up to this cow. Perfect. Uh, that will bring us back to the top of the round. Flexogleb. This cow took his turn? Uh, not yet. I am going to Phantasmal Clone at first level. Okay. Oh, the broken spell that keeps on giving. Yeah, we should really uh, get rid of that forever. <laughs> I'm making this promise. <laughs> I promise you delete it. So I get three illusionary clones of myself. They're your three clones. And I'm going to lay into Weird Al Kalkovich. <laughs> <laughs> eat it. Eat it. Phantasmo. Mono beat it. So they each have one hit point and 10 AC. They can move up to my movement speed after being created. And they can each make an attack using my spell deck modifier. So yeah, they're each going to just smack the shit out of Weird Al Kalkovich. Really uh, laying into Weird Al Kalkovich, huh? It's not bad enough you destroyed his shirt. Find his presence offensive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, roll me the three attacks. 20, a 26, oh. and a 22. Killing me. I here. roll her. <laughs> yeah, no, roll, roll wow. that damage. Uh, it's not, oh. I mean, the damage is pretty low. Weird Al Kalkovich, you, you were a shining star that shone too brightly. Sorry, that, that's a three, because it's two plus one. So I guess it's going to be plus three. So three, six, seven, eight, plus three, eleven. He does take the full eleven damage. Uh, he's still standing. Uh, much like his career, it will outlast all of us. <laughs> Tis all. Walker, that's going to be your turn. I'm going to shoot him 
with one arrow, and then I'm going to shoot the other one with two. Man, I should have had more chickens here. So only one's going to hit. Okay. And is that going to be the first one? But yeah, the first one's at Weird Al. Oh, man. So that's 17 damage. Okay, uh, Weird Cow Al Kalkovich is down, uh, but he will be remembered in our hearts always and forever. Wow. <laughs> Some of us. He just needs the last of Hawaiian shirt just in the wind. <laughs> and yeah, that, that's it for my turn. All right, uh, John, there's currently only one left. I'm going to move 30 feet uh, to come here. And I will go ahead and cast. I'll guess, you know what? Guiding Bolt at first level. All right, roll him. Oh, man. Guys, what are you doing to me? <laughs> yeah, right hit. All right, let's set radiant damage. What the hell, you guys? Making up for our last session. Yeah, I guess so. I was like, oh, the chickens won't be a problem. <laughs> Nearly murdered by chickens. <laughs> All right, no, yeah, this guy's hurting. He's still up, but he's hurting. Anything else? No, that's it. <laughs> uh, Haldak, it is your turn. There's only one cow left. Not for long. <laughs> All right, Mr. Cow. Let's settle this beef. Things are higher. Haldak's just going to wreck him. You take uh, three second damage for all these puns. Ah, <laughs> uh, that doesn't notice. He is completely unaware. All right, first attack is going to be uh, that'll be thirteen to hit. Uh, thirteen will not hit. All right, second attack is a natural twenty. Natural twenty will hit. His hand axe is going to be a twenty-two. That will also hit. The first attack is going to be twenty-four points of, blood, of uh, piercing damage. Ooh, all right, twenty-four points. Yeah, th this cow is also down. You guys are watching as they are slowly turning into goop. Um, from here, can I see anything else that I can attack? Uh, not at the moment, no. All right, um, I throw my hand axe on the aisle, on the ground. Damn. And I pick it back up. Smash all the eggs. Smash all the eggs. It's about this time that you guys hear a very familiar moo. Oh, no. Coming from this entrance over here. <laughs> we got the scoop again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What was that cow's name? <laughs> Does anyone remember the cow's name? I don't know, but it's retarded. I want to say <laughs> Ethel, but it's not Ethel. Jonathan. Well, you guys are trying to remember this cow's name, and you watch, because it's about, you know, maybe like 20, 30 feet up in the air. And you guys watch as Abby uh, just walks down it like a spider and kind of like comes out this way. And you notice that she's dragging along a humanoid looking wrapped package behind her, about the same height as the farmer. It was a cow all along. <laughs> you guys watch as Abby begins to transform and her skin breaks apart. You hear just bones cracking and her skin ripping open. Uh, there's like bits of blood coming out, uh, slowly turning her skin into like this dark spider like. Uh, you can just see like her cow legs now just like dangling limply across her as she does actually have like full spider legs. Uh, and she transforms into a huge creature. Into bum, bum, bum. Boo. There's other spider things too. They come up from behind. Uh, speaking of coming from behind, uh, Corey. Yes. It's about now that you notice that there's a creature sneaking up from behind you. Oh. Yeah, there is another spider cow behind you. Okay. Let the real fight begin. Uh, so Haldak, you were concerned about not having something else to fight. Here you go. All the things to fight. <laughs> Lexaglip, it is your turn. You do still have your phantasmal clones, uh, but there is a spider creature right behind you. I'm just going to step out of this cavern I'm in and into the main room. All right. Um, we'll say you probably had about five feet between you and this other cow creature that was coming towards you. I'm going to post up behind Walker, and I'm going to cast Bonfire right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At the entrance of that cave. So if that creature wants to come out, it's going to have to step through the flame. Through the fire flames. Got it. Oh, and then I get to attack with all my clones. I do believe they are limited to 30 feet of movement, correct? It doesn't specify, but I would say it's the same as mine, right? Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, I'm just going to move all these guys. So these guys, they just hold down into a puddle, and you just see these three puddles just gliding across the cave floor, like Silver Surfer style. Badass. And then that'll be my turn. That is going to bring us to actually having one of the cows do something. And he's just going to come in here, so he's like kind of surrounding your Blexogleb clones. Okay. And he's going to make two attacks. He's going to do a hoof attack and then a bite attack. Okay. Hey. So those both hit, and you watch as these two clones form back into puddles and then slowly work their way back into your body. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you do still have one clone left, and that is that cow's turn. Now for the big mama. Big mama. Oh, Lordy, here she comes. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, does it have a higher initiative score than me? It does. Oh. And it's God. coming over this way. It's going to look over at you, Walker. Oh, boy. And it's going to use its web. So you watch as it kind of just turns around, looks behind it, and like tries to shoot a web at you. Go move. This is only one of the few grossest things I've had to deal with. All right, that is going to be a 19, so it's going to hit. You are restrained. So your speed becomes zero. You can't benefit from any bonus to speed. Attack rolls against you have advantage, and your attack rolls have disadvantage. And you have disadvantage on deck saving throws. Fortunately, you don't necessarily have to move, as it is now your turn. I'm going to cast Summon Beast. Uh, not the lobster. <laughs> the lobster's coming back, buddy. Citizen Snip is on the ground. <laughs> uh, the rock lobster. Now, I'll be putting that like right here. Is he going to make an attack? Oh, yes, he is. That's going to be a 19. Ooh, yeah, 19 is going to hit. Does eight damage. All right, and what kind of damage? Piercing damage. It doesn't all seem to go through. E even for a magical creature? <laughs> I don't know. Is it just doing piercing damage or is it magical piercing? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a bestial spirit, so. Fine, it could be magic. Yay. Bad enough you do get a rock lobster that's holding a gun. You want to be magical. <laughs> magic and a rock lobster's claw. <laughs> you have that claw can seize you. <laughs> Anything else, Walker? I guess that's it. I can't, uh, because the, uh, unrestrain myself, that would be an action. Uh, that would be. It would just be, uh, strength or athletics, I believe. Yeah, no, that's gonna be it. All right. Jarna. I'm going to go ahead and bonus action wild shape into my starry form. You don't actually like get like a, you do change your form, but your stats and everything stay the same, correct? Yep. The only thing that changes essentially is that I can make a radiant damage spell attack as a bonus action. All right. Which I can do as part of the casting of this. I'll go hit the big bit. Gonna go hit a good old Abby. You seem like such a nice cow. You do have to kind of move out of the way because this is blocking you. Okay. There you go. Uh, 18 to hit. Yeah, the 18 going to hit. Ooh, 11 radiant damage. Yeah, she does uh, She does take notice of you. Congratulations. She knows you exist now. Uh, and anything else? Yeah, as a actual action, I'm going to go ahead and cast Guiding Bolt. Uh, the 20 will hit. So another 13 radiant uh, you, you definitely have her attention, for better or worse. I'm going to move here. Uh, that's going to bring us to Haldak. All right, Haldak is going to go for Abby. I'm going to set myself right here, right between it all. All right. I am going to use my bonus action to bring down that potion. Our regular potion rules, you can just drink the little thing and heal up. So how much is that, 10? I'd uh, be 10, yes. I'm going to recklessly attack Abby with two attacks. Now, the first one is going to be a uh, dirty 20 to hit. Uh, that will hit. second one is also going to be a dirty 20. Oh, man. Yep, both will hit. Assuming Necrotic doesn't do anything? Uh, it doesn't seem to be doing anything, now. All right, I will not roll it then. All right, that first one is going to be 10 bludgeoning damage, and then the second one is going to be 4 slashing. All right, still up. Anything else? I'm not taking a goading now. He's like, come on, come on, you dumb beast. Come on. <laughs> all right, uh, anything else? Oh, no, I'm just trying to goad and Abby, trying to make sure, like, all the focus is on me. I'm like shaking my ass and like shaking my uh, my crotch and it's face like come on. <laughs> oh, it's grease lightning and it's just glowing. <laughs> grease lightning, go grease lightning. All right, uh, that will race another one of the calves. They're gonna double move to get over to John, uh, but that will be their turn. And then, all right, so this was the calf that was behind you, Lexogleb. Yeah. It is gonna make its way through the fire and flames. Uh, it needs to make a deck save. Yes, yes, it does. That is correct. Uh, this is a 14 save. It does not. Ooh. It's going to be 2d8 fire damage, 7 fire damage. All right. It doesn't all go through, but it does take some. You rolled a 1d8 again. Sorry. Uh, 9 fire damage. It's 2d8. <laughs> I'm not hurting too bad, but it is going to go after one of your clones with a hoove attack. Hoove. Ooh. Yep. Nope. You watch as this clone also deforms and re-enters your body. Yep. It, it just dissolves. And it's going to go... Straight for Walker for its next attack. Uh, it does have advantage because you are currently restrained. Yeah, neither of those are going to hit. Well, that is upsetting. Flexogleb, uh, you are currently standing behind a Walker who is currently bound up. I'm going to retreat a little bit. I'm going to go up here. You see Flexogleb extend his arm up into the air. He clenches a fist and he pulls his arm quickly back towards his body. So spell and casting is blow. 
but the space around it's a 40 foot cube and i can pick up the six creatures in that cube that i choose so it's basically going to be these three cows big mama and these two cows but the space around them bends and twists and when he pulls his fist towards his body all the air and space sort of like compresses down against them and you see these like translucent chains around these cows that just look like the space you know around around them the, the cavern but yeah they're they're gonna be slowed it's gonna be a, a wisdom save okay i'm gonna start with these two guys here and then go to the big mama okay Ooh. okay okay oh so only that crit will um succeed lame uh so they're slowed their speed is halved they get a negative two penalty to ac and deck saving throws it can't use reactions and on its turn it can only use an action or a bonus action not both and it can't make more than one melee or ranged attack during its turn i think uh the moon calf is going to use its legendary save to save that <laughs> oh well that's lame anything else no i guess that's it all right and before i forget at the end of your turn it's going to take a legendary action and do a spider leg attack against haldak oh that 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 gonna hit uh that's gonna be seven damage uh halved i just imagine she's pissed off and she just kicks you <laughs> like a <laughs> little kick oh. just like is that a critical out. hit yeah so that's gonna be 13 damage halved all right so seven damage i'd uh, be six because it's 13 halved you go lower okay all right cow turn Justin, you're gonna get two attacks on you at advantage i think those hit just they do all right but you are taking half damage i am oh did not roll very well that's gonna be four damage i eat that for breakfast and that will bring us to the main lady uh, i'm gonna see if she gets her webbing back yeah no she doesn't get the web back uh but justin you are gonna get a bite attack with advantage i think the 25 will hit 25 does hit uh so that is going to be six damage uh halved for you but I do need you to give me a con save. Oh, well, good thing he's a barbarian. We got a pretty good constitution. Yeah. All right, that's going to be a 14 plus 6, 20. Oh, yeah, no, you're good. That's going to bring us to Walker. Yep, I'm going to try to take these spider webs off of myself. All right, that is going to be an action. Yep. Give me a strength check. I got a 14. 14 is not enough. You need a 15. Ah, damn. Ooh. You're trying to get these webbing off, and you're almost kind of like tying yourself up more. Anything else? No, I don't got anything else I can use as a bonus action. So, so, so the rock lops just gonna go. All right, roll me an attack. Winging for the fences. That's gonna be a 15. We believe in your rock beat. A 15 is just enough. Weak. So nine damage. Ooh, that's uh, that's pretty good. All right. Uh, yeah, the main the main cow is uh, looking a little rough. Uh, anything else? No, that's it for me. All right. Uh, how Dak, you are gonna get another leg attack from this calf. I think the 25 will hit. 25 will hit. So that's going to be 8. So cut that in half to 4 damage. You got it. Uh, and that's going to bring us to Jarna. Uh, you do currently have a spider cow right behind you. As a bonus action, of course, I'll make that same attack. And going for the main cow? No, I'm going to hit the one that's next to me just to get him off my back. Uh, is that a ranged spell attack? Do I need to back up? I think you would have to back up if it's a ranged spell. Otherwise, it would be at disadvantage. Okay. And I'll back up five. I can dodge if he, uh... Or is he going to make an opportunity attack at me? Oh, yeah. 19. Yeah, that's going to hit. Five damage. And, uh, did the 14 hit? A 14 will just hit. Four radiant damage. That does all go through. And, uh, let's hit this motherfucker with a, uh, fucking guiding bolt. Oh, I crit. Oh. All yeah. right. Uh, so what kind of, what dice is that, Roland? 4d6 radiant damage. Okay, shit. So 13 on a normal roll, and what are we doing for max damage? You said it was a 4d6, so you rolled 13, and it's a 4d6 roll. Yeah, that, that gonna be uh, 37. Ooh, this uh, big damage. I did 37 damage to this motherfucker. Uh, you just watch as this cow explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost like that tiny blast from your like Tari form and like you almost overcharge your next one uh, almost unintentionally like you're kind of surprised at like the pushback you actually like go back five feet it pushes you <laughs> and he was like oh I gotta I gotta learn to control myself uh, you guys just see John is like currently covered in black ichor from the explosion of this <laughs> this calf that would hurt. how'd that go nice 
Yeah, you can just see this through the cow's like le legs and udders. Uh, anything else? I don't think anything else. I think that's that's pretty good. I think that's enough. All right. At the end of your turn, I'll actually get one last whack. <laughs> what <do> I do? <laughs> <laughs> Knock it off. Uh, so that's gonna be another three damage, just. Alrighty. All right. How that? You've got the big mama jama, and you have a small guy here. Now I'm gonna look at her and like, stop kicking me, you little. <laughs> and I'm gonna wail on her with all three of my attacks. All right. Wail away. Uh, are you going reckless? Yeah, it's the only way to do it. I'm just double checking. You don't need to double check. We're barbarian. We go reckless. <laughs> it's how they do. All right. That first one is going to be a 17 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Uh, that's going to be uh 20. 20 will also hit. All right. But I mean like uh natural 20. Oh, okay. So critical. And then my hand axe is going to be a 13. Uh, the 13 will not hit. No, a 12. The 12 will also not hit. <laughs> oh. So for my first mace attack, the non-critical one... That's going to be 12 points of uh, piercing damage. All right. Oh, and that's going to be another 12 points. So 24 points of bludgeoning damage. All right, 24 altogether? 24 altogether. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, still standing. Anything else? I'm going to rip off those legs. <laughs> Maybe on your next turn. And yeah, I'm going to start. I'm just going to start aiming for the legs. All right, well, that's going to bring us to the dead cow who did barely got to do anything. That's a good cow. That will also bring us to the slow cow who can only do one thing. And that one thing is going to be to bite you with advantage. Uh, yeah, nope, that, that didn't work. Ah, cow, you're killing me here. <laughs> All right, Blexogleb. I'm just going to do uh, Fantastic Pokemon again. <laughs> All right, so that could be uh, with the, what was it, three of them again? You just going to level one? Yeah, I'm going to do it at second level. I think I get another one. Yeah, I get one more. So I get four of them. Yeah, we might need to work on that spell. And they're just going to surround Big Mama. Yeah, well, I'm going to put them down, and you put them within the range that makes sense. And, um, yeah, we're, I'm going to attack with all of them. All right, we're only four attacks. So we've got a 24, a 26, a 26, and a 21. Oh, man. A crit for that 20. <laughs> well, you, you get an extra four damage just because of the crit. Yeah. Uh, but then roll me uh, 4d4 plus four. Perfect. 15. Plus the four, that's going to be 19. The cow is looking rough, but she is still standing. Yeah, I imagine all of these Lexoglebs just sort of appear from a puddle to their form, and they just start hammering this cow, and there's just splashes of Lexogleb just, like, bouncing off the cow as they just, like, are punching the shit out of the cow. Oh, yeah, but, like, the spell doesn't end, so they just kind of just reform together. Yeah. I imagine it, like, more like flubber. All right, uh, that will bring us to this cow, and they're going to make one attack on Lexogleb and one attack on Haldad. Haldak with some advantage. Oh, man, those all miss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those aren't going to do it. All right, Justin, in her final fell swoop, she is just going to try and attack you again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Come on. All right, uh, Walker, your turn. Uh, she is not looking great. I wonder if I should just try to shoot at it with advantage three times. <laughs> uh, you would have disadvantage. That's why I meant about that disadvantage. Yeah, screw it. I'm going to do it. Not the uh, one where I get minus five for my accuracy. So I'm going to have to roll six times. Roll them. So the first one is 20 and 15. So 15 is the lower one. The first one hits. Second one is 10 and five. So it's not going to hit because it'd be uh, 13. And then the lower roll for the third shot is going to be a 19. All right. So two of them hit. I'm going to get some extra damage out of this because I have Colossus Slayer. going to take a 1d8 right off the get-go four and then 10 damage for the first hit oh wait a second i can also use favored foe and i'm going to increase my damage by uh, another 1d4 for the second hit 19 damage that is going to do it you guys watch as this cow kind of shrivels back up into its normal form and from that you just watch it kind of burst into like this blue flame as like the ichor just like goes away from her and you just kind of hear this mournful demonic <laughs> as it dies and you guys watch as the other cows also begin to disintegrate along with the eggs oh yes abby your reign of terror ends today <laughs> and you guys see like the one that she was dragging is currently like wiggling a little bit um you have not checked the guys over here though nope all right next gonna take a deep breath Oh, yeah, that's that's what I needed. Guys, we need to find something like this again on the way back. Oh, that was good stuff. 
I'm still stuck. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'll walk over and I'll take my hand axe and I'll just slice them open. Oh yeah, you got you got enough time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the time in the world. I was gonna say I'm gonna have my lobster come over here and, and like examine them and like you know open up the uh, casings. They do seem to be just barely alive, uh, but these are two other mortar members who are part of the scouting team. The other guy you guys found at the bottom of that hole didn't seem to do as well. Flexoglab, these are all spider eggs over here? Uh, they were. You do see that they now are also kind of turning into like a demonic ichor. Uh, there's no spider eggs left? They're all melted? Yeah, they're all starting to melt. It seems that that one cow creature is kind of holding all this together. Oh, okay. Not leaving any loose ends, all right? <laughs> it's a one shot. Or is it? No, it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with this altar over here? This is just like an altar. Ah, uh, yeah, you can go check it out if you like. Oh, well, yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right. Uh, feel free to make me a religion check. A religion check, you say, eh? Twenty-two. Ah, uh, yeah, you're looking at the iconography on here. Um, you're also noticing like this symbol here. Uh, and you know that this, and it all makes sense once you kind of put two and two together. Um, this is a statue to Lul, who is like the demon queen of oh, spiders. Yeah. Uh, what? So it's just a statue on this altar. There, are there any like offerings or like any little trinkets or like anything like that? Um, you see a knife kind of nearby, and this also seems to be kind of like diminishing into like demonic ichor. Hmm. Uh, and then you like look over to the two bodies that uh, the rock lobster is currently examining, and you imagine that these are going to be the first offering. Interesting. Uh, how how large is the statue on the altar? Uh, the statue itself is probably a bit larger than Jarna. Oh, okay. So it's not like a, a massive statue, but it's a good size. We're not taking it with us. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say with over here? These are people over here? The remains of people? Uh, these are the order members that are barely alive. They're still alive? Yes. Okay. Um, I walk away. All right. But yeah, you guys managed to grab these order members. I imagine you'd also grab the farmer as well. The farmer over here. She'll let us kill your stupid cow. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, she was all I had. Now I have nothing. <laughs> well, this is what happens when you have a demonic cow. But you guys, uh, you guys save the day. Fortunately, one of the scout members uh, is able to kind of take this demonic ichor and turn, get a cure going for the woman in town who is currently uh, not doing so well. Uh, but you guys are hailed as heroes in the town.